So LaMelo Ball in the NBL is officially over. His career in Australia is done. And it wasn't the best end to his season. After he injured his foot, he couldn't play for the rest of the year. But we did learn a lot about LaMelo Ball this season in the NBL. And obviously I've made countless videos on LaMelo Ball this season. And I felt like it was my duty to make videos on LaMelo considering he's playing in my home country. I was able to watch every single game live. And obviously considering I have a basketball channel, I felt like it was my duty to post videos on Melo. So it's only fitting to end his career off in the NBL with a video. And summarize my thoughts on LaMelo Ball and his time in the NBL and what we can expect going into the NBA. So if you enjoyed this series and you enjoyed me covering LaMelo Ball in the NBL, I would greatly appreciate it if you guys could drop a like on this video. It would really support me and the channel. And if you're new around here, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more NBA content every single week. Hit that notification button so you never miss an upload and comment down below what you thought about LaMelo's time in the NBL. And if you were unable to watch him in the NBL, Tell me what you thought about my content covering him this season because obviously I would love to know what you thought about me covering LaMelo Ball considering that many of you I know were unable to watch him and his games so hopefully I did a decent job of it at least. I could have obviously made a lot more videos than I have made but I think the videos I've made have actually gone pretty in depth and they've looked at his flaws, his weaknesses but also his strong suits and why I believed he'd go as a top 5 pick in the NBA draft. And I made that video six months ago, so this isn't anything new. I've known LaMelo Ball would be an amazing talent from the start, but now officially I think he's really proven that throughout his time in the NBL. And you have to keep in mind that LaMelo Ball only played 16 games in the NBL. He played 12 games during the regular season and 4 games during the preseason. So overall his experience in the NBL I think taught him a lot about what it's like to play against grown professional athletes. Obviously he played in Lithuania and obviously he played in high school but playing in the NBL is a little bit different in my opinion obviously because number one it's a whole new country. Number two the style of play is just different. As we all know the NBA is a pretty unique style of play compared to every other country and and that obviously makes sense. The athletes are a lot bigger, they're a lot stronger, and they're a lot quicker. But in Australia, in Europe, and in China, and of course other leagues around the world, the style of basketball is normally different, and we can see that when we do watch things like the FIBA World Cup. But overall, LaMelo's time in the NBL was extremely impressive, so I wanted to cover five things that we learned from LaMelo Ball's time in the NBL. Number five, LaMelo Ball's defense. This was a part of his game that was very questionable going into the NBL. A lot of people covered it during his time in Lithuania, but then that talk slowed down once he went to Spire Academy and played kids his own age. But at the end of the day, there was a reason why these discussions were being made, and that's because his defense looked a little bit sus. And that was clear from the start during his time in the NBL. He obviously is an 18 year old kid who has a lot to work on. And Lonzo is obviously LaMelo Ball's older brother and he's somebody on the other spectrum because he is really good on the defensive end. So based on LaMelo's attributes, it seems as if he could become a good defender. He just needs to put it together. And I think throughout his time in the NBL, we saw a little bit of an improvement. For example, just sliding his feet and getting out to open shooters. That was pretty bad to start his time in the NBL. But towards the end of his time in the NBL, that was seen as an improvement. I think just being able to slide his feet against smaller guards, yes he is very agile and he's pretty skinny, but he's guarding guys that are quite small, but they're quicker and they have a bit more size on them. Like Casper Ware, Bryce Cotton, Mello Trimble, all those guys are very nimble guards. They're quite small, 6'1", 6'2", 6'3", but they're big guards. They have size on them because they are grown men. LaMelo Ball throughout the end of his career did a better job of getting down low, sliding his feet, but at the end of the day he is six foot seven so it does make it a little bit tougher but at the end of the day he still isn't above average in my opinion and I think he's got a lot to work on especially just getting out to open shooters that's something that frustrated me at times and obviously you can get away with it sometimes in the NBA I've seen guys like Harden do it even LeBron during his time in 2018 2017 sometimes I could see him not get out to the open shooters like the time where Kyle Kuzma had to push him so I think at the end of the day it's all mental I believe he does have the physical attributes to become a decent defender a decent to above average defender but at this point in my opinion it's all just a mental game and I think he'll learn that as he grows up and matures a little bit more he's only 18 years old but just getting out to the open shooters is something I think he definitely needs to work on Adding on to LaMelo becoming a better defender, I think the one thing that does help him is that he looked a little bit stronger. He physically looked bigger, like more dominant. He looked like he grew a tiny bit and just had a bit more muscle on him. And that was another reason why he came to Australia and came into the NBL. He stated that in an interview. It was to work harder and work on his body throughout the season. So that I think worked well for him. 
But throughout the season, he averaged 1.6 steals per game, and he definitely went after a lot of loose balls and passes. He was very eager to go for the steal when normally players would hold back, be tentative and guard their man. But he was actually pretty good on the defensive end. He was a little bit like Stephen Curry, where Steph isn't an amazing defender, but he does average a lot of steals when he does play. Lamelo was second overall in the entire league for steals per game, so he definitely knew how to get into the passing lane and go for steals. But stats don't always tell the whole story, and I do think Lamelo has a lot to work on on the defensive side, but he did have an improvement in my opinion from the start of the year. Number 4. Lamelo Ball's 3 point percentage and overall stats. If you watched the NBL, you would have seen that LaMelo Ball definitely struggled early on. He wasn't able to shoot the ball at his normal pace, as we saw in his time in Lithuania, his time in Chino Hills, and then his time at Spire Academy. LaMelo Ball entered the league, and he was absolutely shocking shooting the ball. He had an abysmal three-point shooting percentage. Through the opening six games of his career, he shot only 15%, five from 32 from beyond the arc. But then after those six games, he bounced back. In the three games after those opening six, he shot 36% from 3, 9 of 25, and he had a performance that went 5 from 11 from 3, and he scored 24 points. So what can we take out of that, knowing that LaMelo Ball will enter the NBA? In my opinion, LaMelo Ball has always been a pretty solid 3-point shooter, so even though he was having a pretty slow start to his career, he was able to bounce back, and in my opinion, that's the most important thing for a young man like him, 18 years old. The way that you can bounce back from something is extremely important. Here's the thing, if you didn't watch LaMelo Ball and each and every game, his stats don't look that impressive. He did average 17 points per game, 6.8 assists and 7.6 rebounds, which that's impressive, but his shooting percentages are pretty abysmal. 25% from 3 and 37% as the field goal percentage. But the reason why stats don't tell the whole story is because the mellow ball started off his career at a shocking pace. He wasn't able to hit any of his shots, but since the start of his six game stretch, he actually performed very well for the rest of his time in the NBL, and his three point percentage improved game by game, and that was very exciting to watch, because obviously, coming into the NBL, he was known as somebody who could shoot the lights out. And hopefully it was just a bad patch for him and now going into the NBA he can still be a decent shooter because if he's unable to shoot at a high percentage in the NBA like his brother Lonzo or somebody like Markel Fultz it does have an effect on point guards in the league and we've seen that recently. Number 3. You have to remember that Lamelo Ball is only 18 years old. Lamelo Ball coming into the NBL had a lot of expectations. Obviously he's part of the Ball family and anybody a part of the Ball family gets a lot of attention, gets a lot of hype and that's to be expected. But Lamelo still is an 18 year old kid, and he was competing up against past NBA players, guys that are more mature, have bigger bodies, are bigger frames, and are heavier than him, but he was still able to learn, and you could see him improve each and every game. He was able to understand the use of a pick. At the start of the year, he used the pick and roll, but he didn't use it to his advantage. Throughout the last couple of games, he used the pick and roll very well. He was able to use his IQ and passing vision to get his teammates open, but also on the offensive end as a scoring option. And he was able to learn that throughout his time in the NBL, in my opinion, because when he first entered the NBL, he wasn't a go-to scorer. By the end of his time in the NBL, he was that go-to guy. He was the man that they would feed the ball, and he would be the scoring option on the Illawarra Hawks. And I think that just shows his improvement and his time in the NBL from an 18 year old kid who was not as mature to an 18 year old kid who's grown in maturity through his time in the NBL. Number 2. The Aaron Brooks Injury Aaron Brooks obviously as we know spent a lot of time in the NBA. He played with the Houston Rockets, the Chicago Bulls, the Indiana Pacers and a few other teams. Aaron Brooks was a guy that LaMelo Ball could definitely learn a lot from, and I think he did. And when Aaron Brooks went out with his injury, he tore his Achilles and was unable to play for the rest of the year, LaMelo Ball stepped up in his absence. In the last five games when Aaron Brooks was not there, LaMelo Ball dropped 19 points and 9 rebounds. 24 points, 9 assists and 7 rebounds, 16 points, 6 rebounds and 6 assists, 32 points, 13 assists and 11 rebound triple double, and then to end his career, a 25 point, 10 assists and 12 rebound triple double. You could just see his growing confidence in the league, he was able to start scoring, he had a 32 point game, a 25 point game, a 24 point game, compared to the start of his career when he was unable to score over 15 points in the first 5 games of his career. You can just see the difference overall, and he was just playing really well in the absence of Aaron Brooks, it meant that he played with a little bit more freedom and nobody was really on him for missing any shots or making any turnovers, but at the end of the day, he didn't make many turnovers throughout his time in the NBL, and he was the main guy on that Illawarra Hawks team and he stepped up in Aaron Brooks' absence, which was very impressive to see. 
And number one, LaMelo Ball's floor awareness and IQ is off the charts. That is the reason he'll get drafted. He can find players that not many players can find on the court. His IQ is something that is impeccable and his floor awareness is off the charts. He reminds me of his brother Lonzo Ball in terms of running the floor and getting teammates open. His ability to find his teammates was something I knew coming into the league, but I didn't know it would be this good and this amazing towards the end of his time in the NBL. I think he's improved even more than when he actually came into the NBL, and I think that's the reason he'll get drafted. Magic Johnson, Jason Kidd, LeBron James, I'm not kidding, LaMelo Ball is up there in terms of finding his teammates and floor awareness. Those are some of the best players in NBA history to get their teammates open and find their teammates in the best possible spots. LaMelo Ball simply has that IQ that not many players can have. Yes, he's got a lot to work on. Defensively, he's got a lot to work on. Offensively, in his jump shot, I think he still needs to work on. But his floor IQ and his awareness to find his teammates is something that I think is already there. And it does remind me a little bit of Lonzo, but to me personally, even better than him. With that said, if you watch LaMelo Ball, let me know what you think about his time in the NBL and let me know what you think he'll go in this year's NBA draft. Originally, I made a video about six months ago that he'd go top five. I'm going to stick with that. I think he'll be a top five pick, but I wouldn't be surprised if he falls out just a little bit, maybe go sixth or seventh. I think he's got a lot to work on and I think he's got the potential. So I'm really excited to see what he will bring to the NBA. But with that said, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. If you're new around here, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more NBA content every single week. Hit the notification button so you never miss an upload and please hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. It's been your boy Nick Smith. I am out. Peace.